Hi, everybody. It's Sunday. Going to type something to see if everything is working here. Okay, I'm going to bring this up so I can see. Second here. Hi, everybody. Make sure you say something when you come in so I know you can hear me okay. Hi, Colleen. So is everybody hearing me okay? Hi, Lynn. You made it. Did you have your supper? Can see and hear you. Awesome. Hi, Deb. Oh, hi, Pat. Got all kinds of people coming in tonight. How is everybody today? It's a really nice day today. I, I spent the whole day inside working on stuff. <laughs> so I haven't even been outside. I, I mowed my lawn last night. And I feel like a normal person. Look, I got my hair cut. It was the most wonderful feeling. <laughs> I got my hair cut last week. That was the worst part about all this whole thing is not being able to get my hair cut. Ooh. Yeah, my hair looked terrible. So how is everybody today? Wait a few more. Oh my goodness, all of a sudden we went from like 10 to 20. <laughs> wow. Make sure you say something when you come in, everybody, so I know you're hearing me okay. Just type something. See if this is working. Oh my goodness, look in here. I gotta scroll down. There we go. Teresa's here. Oh hi Teresa Jackie. Oh Mitzi's here. Everybody can hear me okay. Debbie. Sharon. Let's see who else. Hi Jackie. Yeah, it is it, it is was really nice. I I walked outside a little bit after I um so some friends and I got together on Zoom so we could practice I could practice Zoom for next week when we do in uh, Kimberbell Club because <laughs> I'm not used to using Zoom. I'm used to this. So it was fun because then I had a chance to use the controls and stuff. Chicken and rice casserole. Oh, cool. That sounds good, Lynn. Hi, Betty. Hi, Marianne. Yeah, I just can't. I just feel so good to have my hair cut. Ooh, it was just what it made me feel like a real person this week. So Monday I and I and I got real brave and I walked into Hobby Lobby because I needed something for a project I was working on. <laughs> and it was like $6 worth of stuff, and I hated to have to have it shipped. <laughs> so I did walk into Hobby Lobby. I feel like a real person. Oh, hi, Margaret. Hi, Jan. Marsha. Oh, hi, Barb. Hi, Linda. Boy, we got all kinds of people getting in here. All right. People are finding us. Oh, from Ms. Romper Room. <laughs> I remember Romper Room. That was great. I like the little, you know, the little things they used to walk on. You get on the little yellow things and you'd walk on them. Denise, I put a the the videos. I'm sorry, I put a title on them, and they don't. I don't know if the title comes up when you click on it, because I do put a title on every single one and the date, but it doesn't ever seem to show up anywhere. So I apologize for that. So, hi Clara, hi hi Marcia. What designs are we doing first? We are doing, um, we're gonna do, there's just one design in this. We're gonna do the um, enjoy the little things, Lynn. But I wanted to show you what we were working on today. So I had fun working on with some friends. We had bought this kit to make these clutch purses. I wanted to show you what we made. So, um, they open up. But I don't know if you can see, but can you see how chunky the thread is on there? Like this purple thread, see how thick it is? These are called uh, vintage clutch purses, and you, um, you use a specialty thread. And I'd never in my life dreamt that this thread would go through the sewing machine. This is number 15 thread. It's very, very thick, and it did. It I mean, we really didn't have any trouble. So I did both sides, and then you have to sew it. You know, you embroider the outsides, and then you sew it together. 
but this is what we did today. So these are called vintage clutch purses. I thought they were pretty. And there's a couple different, there's like three patterns. And then you put these little clasps on them. And uh, here's some of the thread. This is the box of thread that came with it. You got the designs for the clutches and you got the, the 12 threads with it. So it, it was fun. We had fun doing that. I've got two of them sewn out. So I thought I would uh, try to put the other one together tonight. I've got one more done and I thought I'd sew another one out. But I thought that was kind of neat. Dif different. I, and I've never tried these. You, you use this big thread this number 15 and you use a number 16 top stitch needle it has a huge eye in it and it goes through oh my gosh it was just it was it was I was a little scared so I tried one of these out the other day before we did it today just to make sure I knew the machine was going to work for me and I made this one I sewed this one out the other day this one looks sort of like an Easter egg this is another one of those patterns and the pink and the purple are that really really thick thread. Isn't that neat? These are from Dime. But isn't that neat? So I'm going to try to sew this one together tonight and then I've got another one to stitch out because I had three of them. But yeah, that, that, this is what we did. So this was Lynn and I and Kathy and Judy that did this. We'd already all bought these little kits and wanted to try it. So, And I'm starting to get a little bit less scared of this hardware. I actually got it in. It looks pretty good and I don't have glue on everything. I was very proud of myself. So this one even has the little, I don't know if you saw them, this has the little things that you can put a little chain on it. So this is a pretty big one. Um, clutches are like six inches long, so, okay? So that's one of the things, that's what we did today. And then I, I've had some questions while people are coming in. I've had a few questions. What about the bobbin? You just use regular bobbin thread, Barb. Just regular bobbin thread. And you don't want to try to put that heavy stuff in your bobbin, it'll really get mad. But it worked fine with just regular bobbin thread. Um, okay, so there's been a few questions about Kimberbell Club, opposed to the uh, Star Spangled Celebration event that I put up. So they are separate things. So for those of you who are doing Kimberbell Club, that starts next Saturday. You need to come in and get your designs at the store. But I wanted to show you my pillow. I got my pillow done. So here's what we're going to make in Kimberbell Club. It's the little flamingos, and it says, be your own kind of beautiful. So, um, But Jan had a little problem with the buttons, so my third flamingo has pom-poms instead of buttons. But it says, be your own kind of beautiful, right? So anyway, I got mine done, and it's really fun. You do uh, chenille. You do the little flower thing in the center, and then I put pom-poms on mine instead of buttons. But the buttons are cute, really, really cute. So, Okay, so that this is Kimberbell Club. There are 12 designs where you can come month, you can pay for the whole year, and if it's $99, and then you come every month. And they'll be in the store once we can be in the store. Right now they're gonna, the class will be on Zoom, but you have to come to the store to pick up your designs. The event, which is called Star Spangled Celebration, is a one-time thing. You get all of the fabric, all of the embellishments, everything to make all the projects in that, plus some extra projects on the CD. So that's a separate thing, and that is in July. And we're going to do a little patriotic, the little patriotic stuff. Okay. Hi, Sharon. So that, that was, there's, there's been some talk back and forth they're not quite understanding. So if you need more explanation, call me at the store and I'll explain it again to you. So, but anyway, this is the pillow we're going to do on Saturday. That's Camberbell Club. And they call these dealer exclusives. That's what the designs are. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Enough of show and tell. <laughs> yeah, I've been having fun making things. So I'm going to work on those purses some more tonight. But tonight, we're going to work on this darling little table runner. Second, i got to get, get these off of it so I can reach it. Get my purse off of it. There we go. We're going to make this darling little table runner. Now, this is a free design on Kimberbell. Okay? So you can go to... Hi, Kathy. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Diane. You can go to Kimberbell.com. And it's under their collections and free downloads, I think is what they call it. And it's called 
enjoy the or I think it's just called little things, um, but I call it enjoy the little things table topper. There's a sewing version and this is the embroidery version. Okay, so this is what we're going to do tonight. So we're just going to do the top tonight. I'm going to show you, you know, we're going to embroider the top and then we're going to sew all of this together. And I'm going to talk about these tumblers. We're going to talk about the tumblers a little bit more. There's um, when I made these originally, I did them in the scan and cut and we talked about the cutting them in the scan and cut a couple weeks ago. I'm going to show you another way to cut them because I also have a template and I'm going to show you some rulers. So that's another way to cut these. Okay. These little tumblers. All right. What size piece of white fabric do you need? The white fabric is, I think it was eight and a half by 10 and a half. Jackie, let me see. Yes. Eight and a half by 10 and a half. So the, the designs, this is the instruction sheet, the instruction sheet for the sewing, and then for the embroidery are all together in one file and you can download it and um, and then you will have this design. And this was a free one. There's another one up there I think we'll do eventually too. It was a really cute little pillow um, that's done with um, the squares. So um, they wanted to teach people how to use these rulers. So the rulers are fun. Um, I did have a couple of changes with this. Um, so as I was reading my instructions, they usually, they often use cutaway um, stabilizer on the pillows and when I put these little pillows together or when I use the make the um, when I make the blocks I often don't like anything left behind here especially if I'm going to quilt it so what I did is I used a tearaway stabilizer so it says in, in the instructions to use cutaway but I use tearaway and I'm going to show you how I hoop this okay so this, this little block is what we're going to embroider. All right, let me turn this camera around here. All right, so um, I prepared my, my fabrics. There's not a whole lot. You need um, a little bit of background fabric cut. i got to find it where they lay it. Oh, there it is. This is my little background fabric. So you needed a piece that was, there's, two, there's a little teeny skinny piece here. And then that one is one by 11 and a half. And then there's a bigger piece that's five by 11 and a half. So these two are the pieces that go on top and the bottom of the tumblers. And we'll sew those on in a minute. And then you need the background fabric. And I just used a tone on tone white. I don't know if you can see it has a little bit of a figure to it. It's very subtle. And that is eight and a half by 10 and a half. Now, I like to use um, shape flex on the back of my fabric. So I have ironed that on. It's a little loose in this corner so you can see. So this is a piece of shape flex that I've ironed on to the back of my fabric. It gives it some nice stability. All right. Then, now I know this is going to sound strange, but when I go to hoop these, this fits in a five by seven hoop. And you could put this on perfect stick and that would work fine, like the tacky tearaway stabilizer. But I like these pre-cut stabilizers. I'm really lazy. I don't like to cut stabilizers. So I buy these nine by twelves. And this is a nine by twelve piece of tearaway stabilizer. So I turn my fabric over on the back. I've got my fabric glue stick. I'm going to show you my goofy little trick. I'm just going to put some glue stick on the back of this. It's very neat and clean. I would highly not, or I would recommend not using adhesive sprays because it gets in your machine and causes all kinds of havoc. This stuff does not bother anything. I've used it for years. I'm just going to lay this on the tearaway. I'm going to smooth it on. And I do all the Kimberbell quilts this way. So when we do our Kimberbell quilt in July, when we start doing We Whisk You Merry Christmas, this is how I do I do all my my uh, backings. I use my, my Shape Flex and I glue it to a piece of tearaway. Then I've got my 5x7 hoop here. Give me a second. And we're going to hoop this. It's not very easy to hoop on my machine, but you can see it then. 
And I don't know if you realize it, but there is actually an up and down to these hoops. I don't know how many people, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in here. Let's see. Um, one side of this, I don't see, see it. One side of your hoop has a little arrow right here. Can you see that? It's a little bit faint, but there's a little arrow. And then on the top of the hoop, on the loop part, there's an arrow. By the way, there's an up and down to this inside loop. So you want your arrows to match. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to lay my fabric with the arrow up. I'm going to kind of center it as best I can in this, on the fabric. And then I'm just going to hoop the whole thing. And if it's not completely centered, it's okay because we can, we're going to be trimming it later. It's going to, we're going to trim it down so it'll be fine. Okay, and then I'm going to tighten the screw up. Okay, and that's my fancy hooping trick. I love the little, the glue stick. We kind of figured this out a while ago when we started doing some of these Kimberbell quilts because the, the shape flex works very well to, to um, stabilize your fabric. And then you don't have to leave any of that tear away so we can take the tear away off. And if you leave the cutaway on, and, and the mesh will work if that's what you want to use, that's fine. I don't like to use it on the pillows though, because like this one, it called for cutaway. And I use tear away because when I leave that cutaway on, sometimes it makes, you know, the, when, the, when I put the pillow form in, it makes it look kind of bumpy or something on the edges. So I usually use the tear away on these too, okay? And then the mesh cutaway would have been fine in this one, but I use the tear away and so that there's no other stabilizer in here. I just tore all the stabilizer off, okay? All right, so we have hooped our fabric. And the first step of this is simply to embroider the block. This is all embroidery, the enjoy the little things. There is no um, applique. So I've done a little pre-embroidery so that you don't have to sit here and watch me embroider this entire block, okay? So I'm going to set this hoop aside. Second here. And I've done... With the magic of TV, right, I have embroidered some of the letters already, so we don't have to, hi Nita, so we don't have to sit through all the letters. So let's pick our pat pattern. I'm going to go to my embroidery, and I'm going to go down to where my stick is. This is the Luminaire, and let's see, Little Things Table Topper. And there's just the one design. Here it is. And I'm going to set it. So since I've already sewn out the first three colors, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit embroidery, and then I'm going to go ahead to where it's going to sew the word things. And I believe I did that one in orange. So we're going to go down to where the word things is. So to get to go forward, put this a little lower. Here is your plus minus needle button. And on my machine, I have arrows. Some of the older machines have a plus spool, like a thread spool, and a minus thread spool. So you can go forward a whole color or back a whole color with those. Um, the newer machines, most of them have the arrows, like the Dream Machines and the Destinies and um, the Solaris, the Luminaires, all the newer ones have these little buttons. So I'm going to go down because I want to go down two or three colors. So there's the little, and then I want to start with things. Okay, so you don't have to sit here and watch me embroider all these little letters. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do things. Okay, got my orange thread in here already. Got a number 11 embroidery needle in here. Get a little closer so you can see. So is the video okay, everybody? Looks good on my end. I, I, they have changed some stuff on Facebook, and things are starting to settle out a little bit. So, okay. Now the other thing I wanted to tell you, if some of you have luminaires, they have this new thing on here. That, um, I got to show you. This was very exciting to a couple of my students the other day. So if I go to the settings on my luminaire, there was this really cool thing they added to it. That. Um, allows you to use the start-stop button without having to lower the foot first. 
Not all the machines do this. This one does. But see this, this little thing that says auto down? If you turn that on right here, in, and that's in the settings. It's on page two for those of you who have luminaires or solarises. And I click OK. Now, if you look over here, normally this light would be red when I go to start the machine because the foot is not down. You can see my foot is up. Okay. Well, I don't have to, it is green. Mine's green because I have that auto down put on. And so I'm going to click this button and all I have to do is start. See, I didn't have to click two buttons. Isn't that awesome? I think Mar Mary Ann, did, did you see that? So, yeah, so that's something that is kind of new. And I'm trying to remember if the, if the Dream Machine with the second upgrade might have had it. I just, I can't remember because I don't have my machine to look at. But that was really, really cool. And I like it because I don't have to push so many buttons now. And I didn't know, realize it until I turned it on. I'm like, oh, I can, I don't have, I can just start and not have to put the foot down. All right, so we're working on things. Is there any questions about the hooping? What I used on my fabric, ShapeFlex is a Pellon product. Um, it is sort of like gold right now. Um, I'm having a little difficulty getting it. They, um, I think people must have been using it to make masks. So um, if everybody's kind of out of it. So, um, but that works really great for a preparatory. It's sort of like, um, if you haven't used it, it's sort of like muslin with an adhesive on it. But I've been using it and it works very well. You can buy it by the bolt. I buy it by the bolt because I use so much of it. Any other questions that, that you have about the hooping? You okay with the hooping? Like I said, I like these little pre-cut tearaway stabilizers. I'm lazy. I don't like to cut stabilizer. This little design takes about 17 minutes, just so you know. But we're we're nearly nearly at the end. I have several other things I wanted to show you about the cutting. Does iron on interfacing work also? Um, Denise, I've never had very good luck with regular iron on interfacing. Um, there is, this is more of a, a fabric preparation. Um, some of the interfacing does not adhere well enough for me, and, and then it's kind of stiff. You can try it. Um, the no-show mesh fusible stabilizer works, but I have trouble with it. It's kind of dainty, and if my iron's a little too hot, it wants to get wrinkly on it. So this Shape Flex is much more forgiving with the iron, and it makes everything not too stiff. But um, instead of tear away, do you ever use soft and stay I, and just leave it in? I don't know what soft and stay is, Debbie. Is it is it like a, a meshy stuff? I don't know what that is. You can use, you can leave a, like it calls for in the instructions, a cutaway. And you could use a piece of mesh stabilizer. But I don't, I, I like, I like the um, tear away because it seems like everything is more stable. What was that called again? Oh, the um, soft and stay or the, my shape flex, Jan. Tear away, do you ever use soft and stay? Yeah, I, I've never used soft and stay. Do you know what, what, what product or who makes that, Debbie? And the reason I don't leave it in is because some of that, I do leave the mesh in, yes. I don't like to sew with no batting. It's like the mesh. Okay, that would be fine with this. But I, I don't know. I don't like, how do I describe this? I don't like sewing on only mesh stabilizer without batting, I guess is my best explanation. Mesh stabilizer does not hold very many stitches. Oh, the Shape Flex. Yes, that is a Pellon product. It's S, S is in Sam, F is in Frank, 101. 
is a number, but it's shapeless. Um, so when you sew on mesh stabilizer alone, mesh stabilizer only holds about 6,000 stitches. And um, this design is 9,000 stitches. And so I get some puckering with that type of stabilizer. When I'm using batting with it in conjunction, I have no problems. But I prefer tear away because with this, with this, and then I can take the stabilizer out, and it's soft. So that's usually what I weigh. Oh, soft and stay is also a Pellon product. Okay, thank you, Colleen. All right, so there's things. Now we need to do. I think the last step, two steps, are the little bee. There's a little bee, and his wings. So we'll do the little bee in black. Thank you for discussing the stabilizers. There's a lot of stabilizers out there. Um, and the Pellon products, I the only one I really use is ShapeFlex because that seems to really work well for me. Um, some of the other stabilizers are, I have had more, I have not had good results with. Um, that's why I use Floriani and Dime stabilizers. That's my favorite stabilizers. All right, so it's going to do this little trail. If you can see it, it's doing like this little trail up here. It takes a minute to do this. Soft and stays a Pellon product. Okay, so it's like a mesh you got it. Okay. So yes, you could use that, but it just seems like um, a, on this it would be fine, but it's not very, that type of stabilizer will wrinkle a little bit on me, especially when I do these pillows. You know, when I showed you the pillow, I don't like to leave that, that soft, meshy in there because it kind of makes things, once you put the pillow form in, it makes it kind of wrinkly or something. I don't know. So I usually use tearaway on these. Technically, tearaways are for non-stretchy fabrics, which would be cotton. Um, and is shape flex and iron-on? Yes, it is, Pat. Um, but the number on it is SF101, and it's just called Shape Flex. You can buy it, um, it's 20 inches wide, and then you can buy a bolt of it. Um, you can get a 10 or 25 yard bolt. That's how I buy it now. So it's doing this little trail, and it takes a little bit because it has to cut in, be in between all those little, those little things. So. But stabilizer is something that I've had a lot of classes from Floriani and um, from Dime, and they have really good stabilizers, and so I kind of stick with those. I know they cost a little more, but I've always been very, very happy with all the results I've gotten. So I like the Dime light tearaway and the Floriani medium tearaway. And I think both of them are on the website. And then I use the no-show mesh. The no-show is called dime. Dime is called no-show. And then I use the um, no-show mesh. That's what Floriani calls it. So I have all of those on my website. But Shape Flex is something I have not gotten in yet. What do I use Shape Flex on, Marcia? Um, I use Shape Flex. Oh, Marianne, I get my Shape Flex at Joann's right now. Um, I've, I'm going to talk to Tim about carrying it because we can buy it, but we have to cut it. It's on a bolt. So yes, I get it on at Joann's. The Shape Flex is S F, so Shape Flex. S is in Sam, F is in Frank. 101. I use Shape Flex on anything that I want to, particularly cotton fabrics, um, that I want to prepare for embroidery. It's like a preparatory. And it really keeps everything nice and flat. And then you don't have to use so much stabilizer to keep it from puckering on. So that, I've really used it for my quilt block. So when we go to do, um, when we go to do, um, how do you determine to use light or medium tearaway? Um, I've always used medium tearaway from Floriani, Debbie. But we picked up a dime um, tearaways, and I really like their tearaway, but their medium tearaway was just a little too thick for me. It was a little too stiff. So I went down to their light, and it's the same as the medium in the Florian. 
That's the only reason I, it says light on it, but it, it's much, it's more like the medium in the Gloria. The lightweight, some of the lightweight tearaways are very, very soft. They're like, um, kind of like a water-soluble property to them, and they're very, very soft, and I don't usually like those. So this is the um, Dime Light Tearaway. So it's just about done with our little bee. Very good questions. Stabilizer is something that we have to, we have to talk about, you know. So if you're going to be doing the um, We Wish You a Merry Christmas quilt, I would highly recommend getting some shape flex before the class because um, we will want to use that on the back of our embroidered blocks because I, I used it on almost all the blocks. So our little bee is almost done. He's getting antennas now. This was such a cute little block. So when I picked this out, you know, the, I, as I've gotten older, I really, you know, it says enjoy the little things. And as I've gotten older, I really, you know, I really truly believe you do need to enjoy the little things. And some of my little things, like making these purses today w with friends, was just such such fun. And so that's why I picked this. I just thought this was such a cute little saying. Okay, so we got our little bee done. Now I think he needs some wings, and I think then we'll be done. Okay, I'm going to make his wings yellow. Put the thread in. And again, watch, I don't have to put the foot down, I can just press the button. I thought that was in here and I discovered it and I'm like, oh my, that's so cool. So, so like I said, it's the little things. Did you use the shape flex on the background fabric and the applique fabric on me? Yes, I did, Denise. So if you don't have some shape flex, I'd tell you to go get some. I used it on all of the background fabrics. Not the app, no, not the applique fabric, just the background fabrics. Yes, um, actually, I did it on a pillow jam. Um, I have a pillow made of this. I forgot to bring it out. It's in the back bedroom. Um, but there, I made a little, one of those little bench buddies, those little eight inch tiny pillows. Um, it was in my, this design was in um, Hello Sunshine, the quilt Hello Sunshine. So there is a little, a little pillow made out of this design. So it's in the, it's in the quilt, but then it's also in this little pillow. So no, Denise, I just used the shape flex on the backing fabrics, not on the applique fabrics. You don't really need it on the applique fabrics. Okay. All right, so our little block is done. I'm gonna unhoop it. How much do you need to purchase? Well, Mitzi, I buy it by the bolt, so I don't really know. There are, um, do you have your book? I think you already have your book. If you kind of look at the, the sizes of the blocks, you can kind of get a guesstimate. Most of the blocks that you're gonna be cutting are gonna be about this size. And there's about 20, um, I think there's 20, 26 blocks in the, in the quilt, I believe. So that kind of gives you an idea. So you kind of do, they need to be eight and a half by 10 and a half. And then you can kind of, you know, figure out about how many blocks, how much you'll need. I just, I just don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I buy such big quantities. I just cut it off. <laughs> okay. So here's our little block. And if you give me just a second, I'm going to go over and I like to, before I take the paper off, you know, before I take the stabilizer off, I, I'm going to go press this with the iron. So give me just a second. I'm going to get up and do the pressing. warms up again it went to sleep there we go. so I like to trim these with the with the stabilizer still on because it gives me a little bit Yeah, Lynn's saying that Shape Flex is normally about $7 a yard and the bolt has 30 yards. 
coupon or sale is best time to purchase. So if you watch Joann's, they have good coupons, um, and they often have it on sale. So I just gave this a press. I think I'm going to need to do it enough, a little bit more because I haven't. My iron wasn't very hot. Sorry, guys. I've had my iron on all day. That's happier now. That looks better. Okay. So I'm going to move my camera over here. So if you give me a second. This little design was, was created to teach people how to use these wonderful new things that, well, they're not as new now, but these wonderful pop rulers that Kimberbell makes. And if you're going to be doing the quilt, again, I would highly recommend that you get these pop rulers. So I'm going to put this over here so hopefully you can see. I always have to be careful of my embroidery arm because it's kind of always in the way. Let's see if I can get it close enough. Yes, Abby, that is the same stuff I used on the back of my cross stitch design. Yes. Okay. So we're going to trim this block. And this pattern was originally made to teach people how to use their, their uh, pop rulers. And the pop rulers came out a few years ago. And what is cool about these is that they are rulers. Let me pull these out of the way here. They are rulers that, that are open in the center, as you can see. And what's neat about them, you put these little, they come um, three in a package. Like these three rectangle ones come together, and then there's a set of square ones. And then there's another free one that we'll probably do later that uses the square rulers that, to teach you how to use those. But what's neat about these is they have the little window in the center so you can get this lined up. So you can do this with regular rulers, but I find it difficult to get my design centered. But in here, see, I can put, so this is the size of my piece of fabric. So my, my uh, it says that we need to trim it to six and a half by eight and a half. This is the six and a half by eight and a half inch ruler. It says down here, it's very difficult to read without your glasses. But what's neat about it, they have you cut your fabric about an inch wider. So then I can kind of get an idea if it's fairly close by setting that ruler on my block. I'm going to push this over just a little bit more. My camera doesn't want to get over here quite. I got my embroidery arm in the way. Okay. So I've got my ruler here. The, and then what you do is you use the outside, the bigger ruler that goes, see they all pop together. That's why they call them on orange pop rulers. You put this on the outside so that it gives you something more to grab onto when you go to, to trim this. And then to get it nice and really lined up, if you use the smallest one that goes to the inside, it's easier to see, you know, if you are, if you've got it lined up where you want it, because you can see you know, you, you don't have as big a hole to see if it's kind of even. So I need to pull it this way a little bit. And then, then you use that for just judging the size and where it's placed, okay? And then I'm going to take this one out because I won't be cutting the little one. I want it to be on this bigger piece. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. They give you a little, another little ruler, and I forgot to bring it over here. But there's a little, just, just a little measuring ruler that's about this long that you can take and measure to see if you're even also. So let's put this one back in and make sure I didn't move something. You can tell if you're straight, you know. I'm take these out and try it again because I'm, okay, that looks pretty good. There we go. Sometimes I can't see through the, the big one, so. That looks pretty good. It's pretty much even on both sides. Okay, then I'm going to take that little one out. Okay, so as you notice, I have these rulers sitting on a very special mat. And if you don't have one of these things, this is like the best thing since sliced bread. This is a Martelli roundabout. Love this thing. It has a mat. 
So this is the cutting mat, and see there's like a lazy Susan underneath of it. So it actually rolls. Some of the other ones that I've tried, they don't roll smooth. See how smooth this is? I've got one finger on it, and it rolls so smoothly. And they also, then this also, there's also a um, ironing pad that you can put on the top. So if you need to iron, okay? So I just love this Martelli mat. So I wanted to show you that. So with these rulers, this really works because I'm going to show you how these work. So it took me a while to get used to this because you gotta, you got to cut on the inside of the ruler, not on the outside. So it, it took me just a little while to get used to it. So what I do, I've got those little, they, they have these little rubber stoppers on the underneath. And I've got the one in there. Um, I've got the one that this is the six and a half by eight and a half that we're going to cut it. So I'm going to turn it this direction on my mat. You want to put your fingers down and spread your fingers apart so that you've got this held down well on the side you want to cut on. And you can see there's little notches down here where your blade goes. Okay. I'm going to put my blade down and I'm going to be very deliberate and keep it along the inside of that cut. But those little notches are so that your blade will go all the way up and cut your corners. Okay. I'm going to put this slide, my, slide it around. I got a couple questions. Let's see. Yeah, oh, they do now. Do they have the round Martelli wool mat? Oh, that's awesome, Lynn. I didn't know they had that one yet. I, I would love that. So then I'm going to put my fing spread my fingers out. I'm on the second side. And I'm, I'm very careful when I use these because it's, it's weird cutting on the inside of the ruler. Okay? And I'm going to slide it around. And we're going to do the third side. And I do it, I do this very slowly so I don't miss. Okay. Like that. So then I'm going to pull this off. Now, I may have missed just a little bit on the corner, so I may have to take my rotary cutter and just whoop, nip that corner just a second here. There we go. There's one corner. Just a little bit on this one. Now, all of their quilt blocks, including We Whisk You Merry Christmas, are trimmed with these rulers. There are some that will be trimmed with the square ones as well. Okay. And then I'll show you another thing that comes with these rulers. Okay. So there's my block. So now it is squared up to the appropriate size, six and a half by eight and a half. Okay. And that's, that's why I like to leave the paper on because everything is nice and flat. And do you have to use a 45 millimeter? No, you don't, Margaret, but... These rulers are very small, and I usually use the smaller rotary cutter. You can use a 60, but um, and, I'm, and this is a Martelli. This is my Martelli. Okay, so either one is fine, but I, I usually use a 45. I'm more, I have more control over the smaller rotary cutter. Okay, so now we're going to remove this stabilizer. Hopefully, I can get it off. There we go. Just be careful around your letters. And I and what I do when I take this out is I try to get as much of the paper off as I can. I didn't put a whole lot of glue on it, so it's not stuck down too hard. Okay. Let's see if I can get a little bit more. So I'm going to try to get as much of it off as I can since we're going to be quilting around this. And if you don't get it all off, it's fine, though. And I may work on it a little bit more, okay? I'll work on it a little bit more after class. Because we're not going to do the quilting tonight, okay? So I'll remove my, my stabilizer. And then I just have the Shape Flex, and it makes them softer, okay, like that. But I do like to, to cut them with, the, with the, the stabilizer on because it's easier to keep the edges nice and flat then, all right? Okay, so there's our block. We've got it trimmed. There are, like I said, there are two sets of these rulers. This is the rectangle set. 
you get a six and a half by eight and a half, an eight and a half by ten and a half, and then a four and a half by six and a half. So all of their quilt blocks and a lot of their projects. I mean, like even this pillow. This pillow was done with one of the square rulers. So almost all of these projects can use these rulers. And then here's the set of um, square ones. So if you don't have these, these are awesome. And then here's the square one. So you get a four and a half by four and a half, a six and a half by six and a half, and an eight and a half by eight and a half. And that's the one I did the pillow with was the square eight and a half by eight and a half. And then they also come with a few little extra rulers. So that's what we're going to talk about next because we need some tumblers. So for those of you who have the, um, let me get this out of the way and we'll move the, the rulers out of the way. Okay, so with the rectangle rulers also came this cool little template. And the other day, what, how much are the ruler sets? Pat, um, they're up on the website. It seems like one's like $50 and the other one's might maybe 60. They're, they're not cheap, but you, don't, you know, you don't have to buy them again. And I use them up for everything. I mean, I use them for all the small projects, anything that has a six and a half, you know, anything that's square. And I use them for other things too. They're very common sizes. Okay. So with that rectangle ruler set, remember a couple weeks ago, we, we cut some tumblers with the scan and cut. And I drew around, I, I scanned in that little piece of paper that we made this file with. Well, what I drew around was this pop ruler. So this is the little tumbler pop ruler that comes with the rectangle set. There's also a couple of other little things that come with it, but this is one of the ones that comes with it. So I wanted to show you another way to cut out your, um, your tumblers. Now, I don't know if some, maybe some of you have never used templates before. Um, I hadn't until recently. I like to do tumblers, so I bought some tumbler rulers. So I cut my my tumblers, the, one, the colors I wanted my tumblers in. I cut them at like um, four inch squares. I think they were four inch squares. And so I'm going to put my little tumbler template on here, and I'm going to kind of slip it into the center of my mat. I've got two pieces of fabric. I'm going to do two at a time. And I'm going to hold this tumbler template down. Hopefully you can see me. And I'm going to, whoops, open my blade again. And I'm going to cut out my tumblers with my little, and there's like the little notches on the corners. And I'm going to cut my tumblers out. You could have, I could have done this with the scan and cut, but I just wanted to show you what another thing that comes with the ruler set. And uh, I did, let's see. Um, Hello Sunshine has a lot of tumblers in that quilt, and I don't know if there's any tumblers in We Whisk You Merry Christmas, but they use them in some of their stuff. So there's a couple of tumblers. So I just used my, used my uh, little template to do that. I kind of like templates now. I had never tried them before, and I got a few for some sort of a project I was working on, and it's like, wow, that works really slick. Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple more here. And here's the little dog ear. But if you have your scanning cut, you can cut them out with your scanning cut. Okay. But these rulers, I just love them. I, I got them a couple of years ago when I started doing the quilts. And oh my gosh, it's so much easier to do the quilts with the, with the rulers. Because then I don't, I mean, you can use a standard ruler to do the squaring, but it's just hard because you have to try to get it where you want it then. Now this one was kind of directional. This one needs to be, you know, this is up. So I'm going to make sure I put the top of my template on that one. But I did upload the Tumblr temp the, the Tumblr SVG and FCM files to the group. It's on um, Dropbox. And remember to get to Dropbox, you go to Sew Along with Jan, and it is the top post. That's where the, where the um, link is. It's the announcement at the top of the post. I need to go get me a new blade for my rotary cutter. There we go. Okay, so there's my 
last tumbler. So that's what, this one also comes with the rectangle rulers. And then there's, there's another um, couple of rulers that come with the square ones too. So they have some smaller ones that come with them. All right, so any questions about the rulers? So this little project was actually meant to teach people how to use their ruler sets. All right, let me turn my page here. So now we're going to do some sewing. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll get the machine onto the sewing here. I'm going to move my camera back. We're going to sew this little thing together. Have, how many people have sewn tumblers together? I wasn't sure if you had. Are these some? Yes, Denise, we have the, the rulers are on our website and in the store. Yes. And the ruler sets, there's two sets. Um, it seems like on We Whisk You a Merry Christmas, well, some of them are done with the rectangle rulers and some with the square, so you kind of need them both. No, I did not put interfacing on the tumblers, Jackie, because I'm just going to be, I did when I cut them with the scan and cut, yes, I used that terial magic. So yes, but when I just cut them now, I just starched them a little bit, so, so I gave them some body and I just cut them out. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up to sew with. Okay, I've got some cotton thread here. I like this. This is, I get this at Hobby Lobby. I've, I've always been, it's been really hard for me to use cotton thread. I've tried, and I finally found some I like. It's a Pima cotton, and I get it at Hobby Lobby. And it's very smooth. I don't like any of their other thread, but this I really like. It's about 10 bucks a spool, and if you watch their ads, you can get it half price. So this is kind of a light gray. Oops. I'm going to go to the sewing side. Let me just thread my needle here. Put the sewing foot on. Okay. So we're really almost done. This little project was a very quick little project, and it was so fun. And next week, I'll show you how I quilted it with Design Center. So for those of you who have the Dream Machine, the Destiny, the Solaris, the Luminaires, um, some of the new machines have this now too. Um, the um, XP one or the the Stellaires have it. The, Meri the Meridian has it. So there's several new of the new machines that have this too. Um, we're going to use the Design Center slash IQ Designer to do the quilting. Okay. So what we have to do first is we have to sew together our little tumblers. So we're going to sew these little tumblers together. And I, I wasn't sure if any of you had, had uh, sewn tumblers together, so I thought I'd just sew them together for you. So I, I'm going to kind of put them in the same order. Okay. So some of the tumblers have to be right side up and some upside down. So I knew I wanted this one right side up because it was kind of directional. So I put that one in the center, and then I did my pink one upside down, then the yellow, then I put the purple one upside down. Whoops. The turquoise one must be in there. There we go. Okay, and then this one's right side up. Okay, so that's how I want them. I'm just going to put them in a little pile over here. Verse 2. So you're going to sew them together like this. We're going to put them right sides together. And then, let's get my instructions out of the way, and we'll go to the sewing side of the machine. I'm going to hit sewing. And I, I like to piece, you notice I put my J foot on. I like to piece, um, uh, I like to piece with my um, J foot, so I use a piecing stitch. It's on the Q tab, so most of the machines have a Q tab. And then it's Q02. And what it does is it moves the needle over so that I can run the fabric right along the edge of the foot, the right side edge of the foot. Okay? So I have my first two put together here. And you can see they're kind of at a slanch weirdo angle here. And we want to be a quarter of an inch away on this side. So there's a little dog ear, and I have to back up far enough so that I'm going to catch that. I'm going to drop my needle. And I'm going to run that right along the edge of my foot. 
and that's my quarter inch seam. But it was nice because the little template already had the little dog ears on it for us. Okay, I'm going to cut that off. And I'm just going to kind of finger press these open and then I'll press them in a little bit so I can get the next one on. So now this one needs to be right side up like this. So we're going to put right sides together, match up those little dog ears like that. And again, I'm, I'm aiming at the side over here so that I have my quarter inch seam. Now I do have the pivot feature on my machine, so that's why the foot's going up and down like that. I like to use the pivot. Often I'm doing block after block after block, so I'm not doing that tonight. I'm just going to sew these five row blocks together. Okay, finger press that open. And then this one's going to be upside down. Okay. Line up those little dog ears. That really helps you line it up. See how they're nice and, and, and if you cut these out with like a, if, you're, if you cut them out with another template, some templates don't have the little dog ears on them. It makes it easier to line them up with, it, with them already cut. Depends on what kind of template you get for a tumbler. Okay. There's that one. Okay. And then we're going to put the last one on. Get those little dog ears lined up. They had these in one, a couple of the, the things like my table runner and a couple of things that I did for the Hello Sunshine quilt. I just love tumblers. Okay. And there's our little row of tumblers. So what do you think? Was that easy? So if you have the rulers, you'll have the little tumbler template. If you don't and you have a scan and cut, I put the tumbler template up as an F, uh, FCM file so you can cut them on that. Okay. So I'm going to go over and just, just give these a little press before we put the rest of it together. In the instructions, after you get these together, we have to have these, you know, the tumblers are kind of, you know, they're slanted on the sides, right? So when we go to put this together, we need to trim them off a little bit. And they need to be 11 and a half inches long. So what I did with these is I took them over to my cutting table and I figured out where I needed to trim these edges off to make it 11 and a half inches, okay? So since I'm not at my cutting table right now, I'll kind of take my piece of fabric here and lay it along the top so that I can figure out where my 11 and a half inches is going to be. Because I know my fabric is 11 and a half. So I'll just lay this here like this and you can see how I'm going to have to kind of trim it off a little bit. So I think it was, yeah, 11 and a half. It tells you in there 11 and a half. So I'm going to take it over to my cutting table and cut it real quick. Be easier. I don't think. Oh, I have a. I have enough room on this one, so you can kind of see. If I push this over, you can kind of see me. I have enough. This is wide enough that I can do it on here. And make sure I got this cut pretty well. Now this one's only ten. I'll have to take it over here in a second. I forgot about the trimming. You have to trim. forget about the trimming part.
Now I noticed mine is gonna turn out a little short, so you'll have to forgive me. I must've been a little off on my, on my seam allowance or I didn't do well with my cutting, but that is okay because it's a sample, right? We can do, we can do this. All right, so now we want, after we get this trim, so I see I've got my two straight edges here and mine came out about 11 inches instead. So that's okay, it'll be fine. We can make it work. I'm gonna take my, my background fabric the lar this is the larger piece, and we're going to sew this to the tumblers on the top. And you can see mine's a little off, but it'll be fine. We can trim it off. I must have trimmed one of my, I think I trimmed one of my tumblers a little bit. Oops, a little bit short. So I'm going to do my quarter inch seam here. Get my edges lined up. I'm always glad that I can always do a little trimming if I need to. <laughs> and of course it only happens when I have all of you online with me. All right, get this turned on, sewn on. Okay. So this is going to be the center, you know, so the tumblers are kind of in the center. So you can see my, I'm about a quarter of an inch off. So I'm going to go trim this off, truss it and trim it off. Now see, it's magically the same length. Look at there. <laughs> I, I often have trouble with tumblers that I get the seams just a little deeper. You have to be kind of scant. I am not locating the rulers on the website. Mitzi, they are on, they are in with the Kimberbell designs. So go to the, Kim, the, the embroidery designs. They're in with the Kimberbell embroidery designs. That's where I put them. So they are on there. I've got a bunch of them in stock because I figured people might want them for the, for the um, class. Okay, so then we have this little piece that needs to go on the bottom. So this one's probably gonna be a little long too, so we'll just uh, stitch it on and then we'll fix it. Okay, I'm gonna line this up. Now when I line up my quarter inch, I always drop my needle before I start sewing so that I hopefully don't unthread my machine. So I'm going to sew this on the bottom. And I'm kind of lazy now. I don't like to pin very well, so I usually don't pin these. So when somebody else made this, they had trouble with it lining up too. You know, mine's just going to be a little bit shorter. It's okay. It's such a cute little thing. Now, if, if you wanted to, you could sew out the little design twice on here. You could, sew, you could, you could, if you wanted this to be longer and more of a table runner, you could sew this design out twice and put one on the other end, and that would be really cute. So I thought about doing that with this one, is putting another end on, you know, so, so I could make it longer. So I might actually do that for this one. Okay, so let me go press this down. This is the little center. And like I said, I think for this one, I might actually make the, um, I might actually make one for both ends and, and make it a little longer so it's more like a runner, okay? So then all we have left, and with any luck at all, this matches. So I think we're gonna be okay. Mitzi, did you find the rulers? 
So then we're going to take our block on the right hand side. And this one I might put a pin in here. There's a couple of seams I don't want to be flipped over, so I'm just going to pin those seams. And this one here. There we go. That looks like that matches up nice. Like that. Okay, so then we're gonna trim we're gonna sew this on. So I don't stab myself. Okay. We'll do our quarter inch seam. Now I buy these little pins. I also have these on the website now if you didn't know that. I put them up, I got them up there last week. These are those fun, those magic pins, love those. And um, these are those really, really thin pins. So yes, I do drive over them very slowly. Don't go over them 500 miles an hour, okay? I bend a lot of pins, I throw away a lot of pins. Okay, so there's my pins, I'm going to pull those out. So a couple of those are getting kind of bent. It's time to open new pins. So then there's my little block. And then I will take this over after class and press that last seam down. So there's the little top for the table runner. See, you don't even see my mistake, do you? It's just a little shorter. So it ended up, instead of being um, 11, like 10 and 3 quarters inches in here, mine's just a little bit smaller. So, okay? All right. So then next week, what we'll do is we're going to um, do the quilting on the blocks and on the center. And when I quilted this, I did it um, in Design Center, but I did this piece, and then I did a piece for the large, the, the large piece up here, and then I did my, my uh, tumblers or a different um, fill in here. So we'll do that. And if I do this one, may have another enjoy the little things because I think I'll put one on the other end to make it longer. Okay. All right. So let's see. I think we got everything. I'll press that. Yep. I think we got everything. All right. So next week we will do the quilting. Is there, are there any questions? I think I'll finish up and do the other little block. I'll do the other block for the other end tonight. Are there any questions? This isn't a fun little project. I love those little simple projects. Um, the other one is a little pillow, I think, and it was like a nine patch, and it has a little cupcake. I think it's for the square rulers. It's that little cupcake for the square rulers. Oh, Marianne, you had the same problem. <laughs> yeah, it's... When you do tumblers, you got to be kind of scant with the quarter inch. And if I do, if I don't pay attention real close, I, my quarter inch gets a little bit too big. So with tumblers, be careful. You have to make them very scant for them to, to come out the right size. But it's okay. See, it looks just fine. You'd never know, would you? Okay. So any questions? So hopefully you'll understand the difference between the Kimberbell Club, which starts next Saturday, and then the event that is uh, Star-Spangled Star Celebration. That is a one-day event, and you get everything to make all the projects, and you're going to sew with me that day. So we're going to sit and sew on Zoom that day. It'll be so much fun. And the uh, club will be a lecture demo, and then we'll move that into the store once it's safer. So we just wanted to keep everybody, you know, safer for a little while. So I will probably a couple, three months. Great class. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. So next week, we will be doing the quilting on this, and I'll show you how to do that quilting. It's really fun. And then we'll also do the quilting on the quilt. So like the, um, the We Whiskey Merry Christmas, we'll be doing that the same way. So, but this is a smaller, I figured we'd do it on a smaller thing, and then I'd show you the quilt because <laughs> it's a little bit larger. Okay? All right. So if you have any questions, you can message me, you can uh, email me, whatever, and I will be talking to you all soon. So good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.